This is a video about create, how to create multi-tenant applications using ASP.NET Core and EF Core, and I, um, I'm particularly using the library called authpermissions.ASP.NET Core. Um, but just a, a quick intro to this library, which I will read. Uh, refer to as AuthP because the name's so long. Um, so there are three main features in this library. Um, it can improve the role authorization in um, ASP.NET Core by providing a, um, a, a role that you can change dynamically. Um, it, it, contains a JWT token uh, with a refresh uh, approach um, to uh, improve the security of a JWT token. Uh, and there's a video for that. There's an article for the first one. And But to, today, uh, I, I'm going to look at multi-tenant applications. OK, um, so what are multi-tenant applications? Um, they are they're useful if you want to provide a service to um, uh, to some companies or people or whatever. Um, and you could license their, your software um, to each company, but they have to host it and set all things things up, and there's um, a lot of work there. Um, so for something where where you have many companies, um, you want to build something uh, that will look like it's just for this com company, but actually in in the background, multiple people are using it. Uh, this is often called software as a service or SaaS. Um, the, there's a number of ways to um, build multi-tenant uh, uh, SaaS systems. Um, I will just show you this. This is in my documentation. Um, so this particular, the one that AuthP um, supports is one where you have many um, groups of people that uh, that can um, log in, and and all their data is all still um, is stored in one uh, single database. And you can see here, I've got some invoice um, invoices, and they have what I call a data key, sometimes called a, den a, a tenant key. Um, so this, the first person that has a data key of 0.1, and so he, uh, he or she will be able to see uh, these two, uh, the one with primary key uh, one and three, and they won't see anything else. Uh, the company, with, uh, with point two can only see this one here with, with travel and three can only see the uh, this one with the computer um, and we'll we'll uh, I'll give you a good um, uh, demo demonstration of all this uh, but let me just show it. there's a very good um, let's see if I can get it there's a very good um, document by Microsoft about um, multi-tenant SAS uh, database and all the different ways you can do it. Uh, you can in a sharding, individual, all that. And it has this very useful uh, uh, tenancy model uh, comparison. And it tells you the, you know, what it can handle, things like that, uh, and what's difficult. Um, 
And one of the things that, uh, uh, that it says, and I know, is that um, one of the things is it's uh, individual tenant management is complex, right? I've, I've built um, multi-tenant systems for uh, a client and I know that's true. So the AuthP library is designed to make that easier, the, the management of the tenants easier. So let's go and have a look at that. Let's see uh, where we are. Um, I'll just load up the correct um, software. <laughs> so this is um, uh, this software is in the AuthP library. I have lots and lots of um, of examples. I've got four at the moment. I am uh, about to add a fifth fifth one. So example three is a uh, example single level multi tenant. So I'm going to start it up. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, so this this just gives you a, an a, a idea. You can run this if you clone the um, the AuthP repo. You can run this and it, and you can try it out for yourself. Uh, it seeds it with some some data just so that it makes it more easy to look use. So let me first log in as a super um, admin, someone that can do every anything in the application. So let's first look at the tenants. In this um, application, I've got three tenants for you, Inc., Big Rocks, Inc., and Pets Limited. And you can see they have a, a data key. Um, and you can edit the name, uh, which we'll do in a minute. Uh, and you could also delete all of the data for if if the company is finished working with you, you can um, delete it all. So that's that's the tenants, and you can um, we'll create one um, in a minute but let's just go back first and look at auth users so what um what this the auth auth p library does it contains of extra information for roles and for uh, multi-tenant and you can see here uh, this is all all the uh, people in this um, application they can use it, this application and we've got some like the, the super admin isn't in a tenant it, it's just you know whatever um, but we've got actual users down here see this we've got um, we've got user one for for you Inc we've got one for big rock and one for pets right so and if you if you hang over this, you can see what the tenant name is. Right, so we will um, log in as this user. To, the first first thing we do is we log out, then we log in. For for this. Um, for these demos, these users' uh, email is their password. So let's log in. Now, immediately you get a, a, a different home page, and um, and it shows you the invoices for for you Inc. Right um, now. Uh, let me just quick show quickly show you um, this up here. Um, 
if I show you what happens is when you go into the uh, invoice controller, right? It gets the name of the of the company. We'll see how that it does. And um, it, um, if you look at the views, it uses a. I've changed. I've created a <coughs> company layout where from the view bag it it can fill it, this in so you can make it look that it's just for this user right so that that's great so uh let's actually create a new user guess what i'm going to call it a new uh, sorry new invoice um and we create that so um and that is uh, only um possible to see that from um you know for for people that are linked to this tenant and we'll explain how that works um let's go and uh lo now log in uh, let's just get this pets let's do it look at pets log in that So if I log in as pets, I get different invoices, OK? Uh, and that's because um, I've got a, this user, the user here is linked to this um, tenant. So, so let's have a look at the, co at the database. Here is the database. And let's see. Uh, oh, sorry, that is that's the wrong one. This is the one. So here we are. So if I select this, there's my list of company names, and that's how the company name is found. Um, and you can see in the um, get current current company name async, um, and, and that's a very simple uh, application that just reads sing uh, the a single company um, because there will only be one with the right data key. And it will return it. Okay, so that ha that's how that works. And let's go and also um, look at um, let's have a look at vo uh, invoices. So if we look at those, you can see there are lots of um, invoices, uh, and they have different uh, keys. If we go to the end. We'll see our new new invoice with the data key for uh, for you Inc. So that's how the, um, the the data is segmented. So let's go and look at how um, how these bits of uh, these invoices and everything is separated from for each tenant because that's very important so let me have a look let me just get rid of uh let's get rid of everything close all tabs and i'm going to open up the invoice uh db context so this is a ef core uh db con uh DB context, right? Um, and normally you would just have this in your um, constructor, right? That's the norm. But in this case, I add a uh, interface called I get data key from user, and that is a service that AuthP uh, will register when you say you're using multi-tenant. 
So let's go and see at the implementation of this. There are actually two. There's a stub one for doing unit testing, but let's look at the real one. Now, this is um, this is a, a very simple service, but a very important service. So um, it uses the um, uh, uh, IHTT context, context assessor um, to get hold of the current context. It might be null. It's it's null on startup, and it's null if you're running a background application. Um, but but if it's not null, it'll you can look for a user. And and which are going to get the claims for that. So this 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 says get get all data a key from user. So it's it's very simple implementation, right? It says if there is a user because it they could not be logged in, then from the claims find the data key uh, data key claim. If there is one, return the value. Right, and that's exactly what's happening here. Be um, Auth P has made sure that the user had a claim because he he was linked to a tenant. He will have a data key data key claim, and that's will be in, um, sent in here. But how do you how is that used in EF Core? There's something called a uh, global query filter, and you could manually apply them to all the um, uh, entities that you want to hide, uh, or you know you want to uh, that used by multi-tenant users, um, and that's fine. Fine, you could do, manually do it, but I. I prefer to do it uh, to automate this because when you get a big um, application, um, then you want to um, make sure that you don't uh, you, you don't forget to register one. And it all works around having an interface on the these uh, the entities. So I add this. Uh, Inter interface, which if we look at, oh, I can just just do a. It's very simple. It says you must have a data key, which is rewrite in this case. It, uh, in in the other one, you, it might be read only. Okay, so um, that's what it says. So we know this this entity has a data key, and that's true for. Uh, the invoice and for the line item, they all ha ha have this. OK, so if we go back to this invoice, you can say um, you may not know, but this you can. This will give you every uh, entity or any every class mapped to the database by this DB context. Right. So it'll just give you them uh, going around. And what I can do here is I can say if the uh, if the entity type class uh, entity type uh, is assignable from this, I know that I should be uh, providing a, um, a, a a query filter on it, and then I call this command which is in the library so you don't have to write it it's it's a bit complicated um, and what this will do is it will set up this data key right uh, it has it's, it's a bit complicated because uh, you have to create a the a, something which of the type correct type to do this it's just a bit complete com, uh, complex but that's fine I've written that for you you could always do it um, um, manually if you don't like that 
So that means that uh, this query filter is applied to um, every EF core um, query. And it's very good. It's it 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 it'll stop all sorts of stuff. It's very um, rigorous. Um, the only way you could get around it is if you wrote direct um, SQL, uh, and then you'd have to add your own uh, query filter in yourself. So, but if you're using EF Core, it's very very good. Even if you've got includes and all sorts of stuff it 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 will it will um uh, filter every one of them so that's good so um um the other thing is to look at um uh oops let's go right excuse me yes yeah, so let look at um, look at um so we've we've filtered them but what happens when we add a new um entity right um just like i did when i was logged in and i added a new um if i create a new invoice i'm create, creating how does that get its uh, data key set well, there's a couple of ways of doing it, but in here I use it by overriding the save, save changes and save changes async. And I call this um, extension method mark with data, data key if needed. Let's go and see that. So here we are. Um, uh, this is in example three, so you can get the code. I haven't put it in the um, the main code because you might want to have a slight difference in, in this. But what it says is um, it will go through all the tracked entities and it finds anything that's been added. Um, and then it says, oh, has uh, let's find out whether it's um, it's got an I data key filter read write. Remember that was on all of the entities that oh, I want to filter. So that would be that would not be that would be null if that wasn't there. Otherwise, it would have the um, the entity type. Uh, the uh, yeah yeah the entity. Um, so if it's if it's not null and the data key is null, uh, then it will set uh, set it. I, I add this bit where it checking that the data key data key is is null um, because in some cases you might want to manually set the data key. Normally by um, one of the super admin people, um, but that's why I, I do that. So because of that. Every time you add something, um, it will have set the data key to, of the current user, right? If you go back to, uh, yeah, go back to this. This this gets the data key was that was imported here, right? Okay, so um, that's explained how. Uh, what you need to do to make it work, but I want to go a bit deeper. There are, um, it's all about the management and of tenants, and it does, um, it does get a bit more complicated, and that's where the power of the Auth P, P li um, uh, library is good. So I'm going to, I'm going to. Um, logging as a super admin person and I'm going to um, start by uh, creating a new tenant this uh, before we do that let's just have a look at this uh, we currently have 
those three uh, tenants. If I create a new tenant called new company and create it, right, I get a new company. And if I go back here, run this again, there's the new company with a data key, right? And, um, and but both P uh, set a tenants, right? It has its its own set of of tenants, and it has a, all sorts of extra bits in it. But how did this get here? Well, this is where um, let me go to yeah. Um, this what what uh, I require you to do is to um, is to create um, something that implements the I tenant chain service interface, right? And there's some very things, but here, what happens is when I uh, auth p created that new um, this new company, it said it's called this your this um, method with some information. You could you can ignore ignore it, but in this case we want to have our own company tenant because that's how when you log in as that new company it shows you it, the the name of the company and then anything else you want to have in there right so that's um that's how um creating works um and it's it's uh creating something is fairly simple but let's go and see um what is going on So I go and have a look at this. So this is the um, the auth tenant admin service that, that is called to do various things. So here we are. Here's the um, call to uh, add a single uh, tenant with a tenant name. And what it does is creates a uh, transaction across both your code and uh, uh, and auth p and so it sets sets up that transaction it um it creates a new tenant right which should, should uh work but if the for instance if the tenant name was already used it would it would um it will detect that and and return an error um but then uh, down here you call it calls the method you have given it um this one here and if if that works well you can return if you return a non null that's saying i've i've got an error or if has how it if it throws an exception then it will come out. And what would happen is if either of these fail, uh, all the information was that was changed is un is rolled back. It's only if everything is okay that that we commit both the auth p changes and your changes to your um, um, code. And that's the way all the um, particular things it, it works for create, update, um, delete, and delete. Right. So um, let's do that. Let's uh, let's go do an update then. So we've currently got new company. Go back here. Just double check. Right. New company. Um, so we go to this and we say we want to edit it and we want to call it new company li limited, right? 
So uh, if we go back here, run it again, new company limited. So um, again, that's in the, your, uh, that's because you provided a, uh, uh, is this it? Let's delete. Uh, there we are. There we are. Um, this is an update. So what it does is it gets your company tenant. Uh, you have to use it, in, include, include, ignore uh, query filters because uh, at this stage, um, when you're running this, uh, the this will be run by the admin person, and there will be no. Um, no data key. So you find the one that you, you need and you can change the name, right? So, um, and again, it's done in a contract, uh, a transaction. Um, now, let's now do something a bit more. Um, let's delete um, pets, right? So this will delete the, uh, the data, the tenant and its data. So we go do that and it says, oh, no, I can't do that because you've got a user link to that. All right. So we go back to here. We go back to this and we say, oh. Um, pets, here we are. So what we do is we we could ed edit it, uh, ed delete it. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to un um, break that for the, uh, that. If that, that would mean if a person logged in um, and you'd taken that away, they would not, they could get into the application, but they would not see anything because if they haven't got a data key, as the um, trying to find the um, there it is. Um, if you've got, if there's no data key, it will it will use this um, data key, which nobody will have. <laughs> Right, um, so it it will just be rubbish, right? You could put a grid in there, a dynamic grid if you wanted to. That's another way to do it. Um, but anyway, now we've um, d uh, un disconnected everybody from the pets. We can do a delete. So. Again, let's just check. We have a look at the invoices. We run it. We got lots of pets ones with a dot two. Um, so let's go back to the, this, and I'll delete it. It's gone. So we go back to here. Run this again. All the pet, uh, all the um, pets invoices are gone uh, and if we look at the here on that right uh, the the pets company is gone as well uh, and again it's because of um, it calls this handles tenant delete asyncs now this is interesting because uh, the quickest way to delete lots of information like this is to um, create a direct um, SQL command. You've got to be careful, but it's very uh, efficient, right? Uh, that is a very quick application. If you did it with EF core, you don't have to load everything and then 
um, delete it. So that's that's a very good way of doing it. Um, I do show how to uh, get rid of uh, the company tenant. Uh, there's only one of them, so I use ignore filters to get it. If there is one, uh, then I remove it and call save changes. Right. And again, all of this is done within a transaction. So if anything goes wrong, it will undo all that. Um, so that's a, a, a good thing to know. Right. We. Um, I'll just show you one nice little other um, thing. We're nearly at the end, so I it it would be nice. It it might be nice for a uh, for some of the tenants to, to ha have to have some admin uh, rights. Um, you don't want to give them you don't they want to own it, but it must um, only apply to people in their um, tenant right so th there is a feature in the library where it will return only the users that have the same um, data key as the uh, tenant admin person and the, the tenant admins person has this extra um, role and we can revert revoke things so we 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 know we uh, could log it we used in uh, logged in as user one for you Inc before and it worked but I'm going to revoke that person so if I now I'll take that name copy that name I'm going to log in as that. Log in because he's, he's still in the system, but he gets access denied. So that's a simple um, little thing, but could be useful. Uh, it could be expend, ex, extended if um, people think it's useful. But um, I just want to. I'm nearly at the end, but I want to talk about multi-tenant applications. So, um, when I um, when you um, set up the um, tenant, how, I want to show you. Well, I'll I'll, t I'll show you how you could, you register the um, set up your um, multi-tenant. Uh, in uh, Auth P. Uh, let me show you in the actual um, code because it might be clearer. So in my, I'm using um, uh, Netcore 5 at the moment with a startup thing, uh, a, a class. So here we are. I'm, I'm registering the auth permission uh, uh, library, and you have to do various things. Uh, but this, the important things for um, multi tenant is I have to tell it about whether I want a single level or hierarchical. I will talk about hierarchical in a minute. Um, and here is you, you have to provide the app, um, the connection string to your um, uh, your part of the database, um, and that's used for checking and setting up and things like that. And the, and you also have to register your um, this. Uh, you saw it a minute. This one uh, a you have to register. Uh, uh, a class with that has that i tenant change service and you can see it on in startup here right and that's what you need to do the, uh, the all the other things down here you need this because i'm using this secret server this 
all of this is my setup to set up all the system so that it will it will have um, data in there. Um, so you can ignore that. Um, but there is a, a lot of documentation and this is on the configuration and it takes you through the different types, etc. why you have to provide it. And it, here is a, a, a nice little uh, diagram to about um, uh, explaining how when you um, create, update or delete uh, something, then um, AuthP will do its bit and then it will ask you, uh, it will tell you, I've done this, do you want to do something to it? And then you can apply, apply something to the uh, your tables. And it's all done in within a transaction. OK. Um, uh, yeah. So let's go. I'm, not, I'm briefly want to tell you. About a higher hierarchical multi tenant. Um, I, I'm not going to explain it in lots of details. It, it much of it is the same as um, the single tenant, uh, but you're dealing with uh, um, this sort of a approach where you could have multiple uh, layers in it. So for instance, you might, you've got San Francisco, there's two, there's two um, shops in there. Someone at this level might be, can look at all the information from these two uh, or oh, any any um, shops below here and look at all the stocking uh, stock and you know send out new um, stock to them when they need it and people up here might be looking at uh, what is selling you know um, how much money they're making that that sort of stuff so it's a very useful approach um, there is an example called example four, which does it does exactly what this does uh, in. Um, so you can play with that. Uh, I want to show you the the the, um, the the names of things gets a bit more interesting because uh, it shows the hierarchical of, approach um, of everything. So the where was it? I mentioned dress for you in San Francisco. So we got San Fran dress for you. There you are. So that's that's what it want, uh, what you would see. Um, it gets a little bit more complicated um, in in the uh, auth P code, but it's not too bad for you because for instance if we change a name say west coast uh, say you you're not going to call it west coast you want to call it west area it has to go through all the ones below and fill them in now um, that's complicated but i can show you that the if we go to example four four uh, and this is the, the class that implements that. You see that when we go and uh, did he update name, it's not complicated. What's happened is the complication is, is being dealt with inside e auth P and it will call this multiple times for all the cha changes it needs to do, right? So uh, it, it has to change this one, this one, this one, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for you, you all you have to do is have the, uh, uh, something which will change one level, right? Um, the biggest complication is um, if you want to move a hierarchical. Say, say you. This is a starting point where you had West Coast. Everything's getting bigger, so you want to add in a, 
uh, California under West Coast. You have to redo these, uh, recopy this, move that around. Um, and EF, um, the Orthped library does that. And the code that you have to write is not that um, complicated. Here it is. Uh, it will be called multiple times for each version, right? And it will just go round and uh, uh, be called times and time again. But it's, it means that it's simple for you to do, but not. Um, um, but it's it's complicated, but for you, it's not that complicated. Finally, I'm going to just mention. I uh, was on a the EF core community stand up about global query filters, um, which is uh, what in, is used in this uh, these tenants, um, multi tenant systems. Um, I start off talking about soft delete, which is a great um, um, feature. Um, and then I go on to talk about these multi-tenant systems. And um, it, at about 48 minutes in, you can watch the whole thing, but at 48, I start to talk about the uh, multi, uh, the hier hierarchical uh, system. And you can re uh, see that a bit more uh, in that. So, on that, I'm going to leave you. Uh, my summary is that um, multi-tenant libraries are can be very um, uh, sorry. Multi-tenant applications are useful if you want to provide the same service to multiple people. Um, the Authput P library will really help you with the uh, um, admin of uh, tenants. Uh, the, there's a ton and a half of um, of uh, documentation under the wiki here. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's lots of stuff there. And there are two examples of multi-tenant applications, one for single that you saw and this multi-tenant version. So that's it. Thank you very much.